Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Cons Prepper, and in this video I'd like to introduce a new piece of equipment and announce a new playlist here on the Cons Prepper channel covering the Cantronics Cam XL Terminal Node Controller or TNC. This is a multi-mode TNC or terminal node controller. It's been around for 15 years. It's still in production. Unlike other TNCs I've shown on my channel that are mode specific or band specific, the KMXL will support VHF and HF operations. It also supports gateway functionality between those two bands, VHF and HF. It has an onboard bulletin board system or mailbox system, so you can set this up as a digital repeater and store and forward messages there like an old bulletin board system back when computers first came out using modems. People with other TNCs can log into this at a remote location, leave messages for other people, and they can pull that down by their call sign. It's a standalone product when set up in a DigiPeter configuration, so you don't need an external computer connected to it. Once you get this set up and paired up with a radio, you can put this at a strategic location and support emergency preparedness and emergency communications. And this is called DigiPeter Operations, and we'll cover this in a future video. It's a really versatile piece of hardware, and I'm glad I have this opportunity to demonstrate it here on the channel. Today's video is going to be limited in scope because there's so much capability in this unit with the multiple modes. It supports over a dozen modes, too numerous to mention here. So with the magic of editing, I'll go ahead and insert a list with a text box before I put the video up. So today's video, we're gonna go ahead and kind of do the unboxing, connect it to the computer for the first time. We're gonna pair this modem up with ICOM's ID-880H D-Star Mobile Radio. This is my base station radio here in the shack. It also gives us an opportunity to use the USB SA44B spectrum analyzer measuring receiver, because part of the configuration of this modem is to set the deviation level. No two radios are alike, so manufacturers of TNCs allow you to adjust the output level of the audio coming out of these modems to your radio to ensure that you're putting out the proper signal, the proper deviation level. I've gone ahead and already created a data cable to interface this TNC to the ID-880H, tested it, it works. In the configuration we're going to do today, we're going to download a program called HyperTerminal. Those of you who use Windows in the past, this used to come with Windows. I had to download it separately. But HyperTerminal is going to allow us to access the basic configuration and functionality of this modem to get it started, get a call sign loaded, and enter the calibration mode where I can adjust that audio level. We're going to connect the modem to the radio. The output of the radio is going to come across the back here with a coax cable. It's going to connect to this device here, a BIRD 4275-20 RF sampler. The power is going to go through the sampler to a dummy load. Whenever you're testing or calibrating radio equipment, you never want to hook it up to an antenna. You want to terminate that into a dummy load so you don't cause interference. The purpose of the RF sampler is to tap off a little bit of that RF energy at a lower level that we can put over into the spectrum analyzer without blowing the front end. If I connect the radio directly to the spectrum analyzer, it would blow up the front end of the spectrum analyzer. The maximum amount of power I can put into the spectrum analyzer is 100 milliwatts. And I'm going to be coming out of here with 10 watts. So we're going to come out with 10 watts, come through the RF sampler. Majority of that energy is going to be absorbed by the dummy load. We're going to get a small sample out of the RF sampler to bring into the spectrum analyzer. With its companion spike software, we'll be able to look at the deviation level once we put this in the calibration mode with HyperTerminal. So what I'll do now is roll over to the desktop software. We'll get this all hooked up. All right, guys, the first thing I want to do is recap what I'm going to set up here. I made this slide last night. I have the laptop here representing my computer here. Because the Cam XL does not have USB capability, it still uses a DB9 serial connector. You'll need to purchase a USB to serial adapter. You'll need a standard DB9 serial cable to connect to the back of the Cam XL. I made a custom cable to match up with the radio that connects the Cam XL to the radio. I have coax cable coming down connected to the RF sampler going through to the dummy load. And then the RF sampling port comes to the Signal Hound USB Spectrum Analyzer. On the laptop or the desktop here, I'm going to be running two programs. The first program is the companion software, Spike, for the USB SA44B Spectrum Analyzer. And then I downloaded the old-fashioned hyper terminal that used to come with Windows that you have to download separately now that will communicate with the CAM XL modem. And essentially what we're going to do is enter the CAM with the hyper terminal software, enter the calibration mode to increase and decrease the drive level 
so we can increase and decrease the deviation level to match it up for 3.5 kilohertz as called for in the manual. So let's go ahead and close that slide. I already have the spike software up and running. I have the center frequency set. The reference levels are set. I have one trace here, the black trace, which is clear and right. And then the red line is the max hold line. To show you where the signal is going to come in, I'll go ahead and hit the push to talk on the microphone. And there's our signal coming out of the radio. It's coming out of the radio into the dummy load, and it'll hold that signal. I'm going to go ahead and open up the hyper terminal and show you how I have that configured. I'm not going to register it. Now I've already initialized the modem, and I have a default setting in hyper terminal. So we're going to go over here to file, open, cam. We'll go ahead and hang it up and I'll show you the settings. The configuration here, 9600 baud's, data bits 8, parity none, stop bit 1, flow control none. We'll hit OK. We'll hit settings here. The terminal keys for the function hour and control keys is terminal keys, backspace sends a control H. The terminal emulation we're going to do is VT100. Telnet terminal ID of course will be VT100. The buffer line's 500, this is all default. We'll go to ASCII setup, and nothing is gonna be checked in here except for wrap lines that exceed terminal width so they don't run off the screen. Input translation, we don't need to touch that, and we'll hit OK. Now I'm gonna click the phone here, and this is gonna open the connection between the CAM, XL, and this terminal program. And you're gonna see garbled text running across because the CAM XL is cycling through the different baud rates trying to match up with what your terminal emulator software is running. We're set to 9600. So when you can actually read, press shift 8 to set baud rate, you're locking it in. So I'm going to go ahead and take the phone off the hook which sets up the connection. Turn the CAM XL on and you should see that garbled text come across and as soon as we can read it, we hit shift 8. Now we've locked in the baud rate, it's asking me for my call sign, K1DOS, we hit enter, and now we're in command mode. We're talking to the cam, we're ready to go. Now I'm going to make sure we're on port 2, the VHF port, because that's what we're going to calibrate, port, we'll hit that command, and it says port 2, so we're on the right port, and I'm going to hit cal for calibrate, and now I have my calibrate options. Now, by default, this modem came above 70. I thought I hit a reset, but we're at 25. That's still lower than what it should be. But the instructions are pretty simple here. If you hit R, it puts it in receive mode. If I press M, it transmits a mark out of the radio, S, a space. A T sends a square wave, and B is random. The instructions say to press the T to send a square wave out, and then measure it with your deviation meter and adjust that up and down as needed to match that 3.5 kilohertz of deviation to properly align it. So I'm going to try to slide hyper terminal over here to the side so we can actually see this take place. I'm going to go ahead and hit T and you can see it's transmitting again. I'm going to hit zero span and that's taking us into modulation mode. Now here you can see FM peak plus or minus in the Hertz level. What I'm going to do is come back over to hyper terminal now and press the plus sign and bring this up and you should see these numbers rise and when we get to around 40 it should say 3.5 kilohertz. So let me hit press the shift plus sign and we'll bring this up and you should see that deviation increase. There we go 1.3 kilohertz. We're going to keep coming up 2.5, 3, there we have it, 3.5 kilohertz plus or minus deviation. So now that's properly aligned over here in the hyper terminal. We're going to go ahead and hit exit and that'll lock it in. I'll go ahead and break down the test setup here, connect the radio up to an antenna. We'll set the cam up, open up RMS Express and demonstrate sending and receiving radio email over VHF packet radio using Cantronics Cam XL multi-mode terminal node controller. Be right back, guys. All right, guys, there you have it. Packet Radio Communications with the ICOM ID888H, D-Star Mobile Radio, and Cantronics Cam XL. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with an intro video on Cantronics Cam XL and announcing the new playlist for this TNC or Terminal Node Controller modem. Thanks for watching, guys.